Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Gujarat State Fertilizers and Chemicals Limited Investor Conference Call Meet to discuss the financial performance for Q1 FY2023-24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nitesh Vagela from Anurag Services LLP. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you and good afternoon. Welcome to the Q1 23-24 earning conference call of Gujarat State Fertilizers and Chemicals Limited hosted by Anurag Services LLP. From the management, we have Mr. Vidhi Nanavati, Executive Director of Finance and CFO, Mr. Nidhi Pillai, Company Secretary and Vice President Legal, and other senior members from the management. I would like to thank the management for giving us the opportunity to host this call. We will begin the call with opening remarks from the management, post which we will have a question and answer session. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining this ESFCQ1 post result conference call. All are welcome to the event. Uh, hope you have seen our results and the other presentations uploaded on our website and as well as the stock exchanges. Uh, this was a mixed quarter. We had the highest uh, sales in last 10 years Q1, second highest sales. Last year was the highest sales. Uh, though the margins were under pressure, uh, there were two main factors leading to the margin uh, being down. One was the subsidy adjustment. The, as you know, government reduced subsidy from January 23 as well as April 23. So all the inventory lying uh, without for sales, the subsidy, lower subsidy impact was felt, and it was accounted in Q1. So it was a one-time impact, and uh, uh, we hope now uh, this will not be repeated. Similarly, for the industrial products, uh, high-cost inventory uh, built up at the beginning of the quarter when it was sold at a lower price because of the international price parity. Uh, the margins were affected in IP also. This was also kind of a one-time event, and we hope it will not be repeated. As far as subsidy collection is concerned, government has been very prompt in releasing the subsidy. So for PNK fertilizers, we have got subsidy up to 15th of July, and for urea, it is up to June end, and it is reflected in our healthy cash flow. As you all know, we are a debt-free company, and uh, we have a good amount of uh, liquid cash in our hand. Physical performance was okay, except uh, the shutdown of urea and some other plants during Q1. Uh, so as far as uh, physical performance, as well as the market demand of the products are concerned, uh, there is no issue uh, in this quarter. As I explained, it was only subsidy effect and uh, inventory write-downs kind of thing that affected the financial performance. Uh, along with the reduction in the end product prices, the cost of input also went down. So ammonia, fossil seed, natural gas, sulfur, benzene, all major raw material prices were uh, down during the quarter, and uh, now they have kind of bottom out or stabilized. Uh, benzene, sulfur, all are, as you know, the derivatives of crude. So crude has improved from between 80 to $85. So that rise is reflected in these crude derivatives. Uh, industrial products, we see some increase in the margin and the realization, but I think better picture will come from in the H2 only. Uh, 
as I said in the morning, we are <clears throat> expecting 15 to 20 percent rise in volume in fertilizer sales this year. So Q1 being not a rainy season, so like every year the sales volume were little subdued, but it will pick up and uh, overall yearly growth of 15 to 20 percent is expected. Uh, Sikka unit, uh, particularly we are uh, increasing the production in this four months. It has reached almost the last year's level and uh, with good price support and subsidy levels at uh, cost economics level. We will have a good margin in Sikka and we want to continue production of DAP and NPKs there throughout the year. Uh, project details are there in our website. All those projects are going on as per the schedule. We will be commissioning Ammonia 4 project uh, by December 23, and other projects will be coming up as per the timelines mentioned. So, on overall basis, uh, we feel that Q1 is uh, not really the reflection of the coming period and GSFC will be performing much better in terms of top line and bottom line uh, throughout the year. And we also hope that looking to the economic scenario, government will uh, calibrate the subsidy from October considering all the relevant factors and <clears throat> so much reduction in subsidy may or may not take place. So with these remarks, uh, thank you for the patient hearing. Now we can take up the question answer session, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question key assembles. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star in one. The first question is in the line of Ashish Agarwal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes. So basically, I wanted to check last time in the con call, we were informed that uh, something is going on the restructuring side, which guidelines have come from the Gujarat government. So I understand that it is price sensitive and you might not be able to tell much, but at least can we know is, is something happening on that? Has some meetings happened so far or not? So as you may be knowing, being a government guideline, uh, we'll be examining those restructuring proposals. Uh, there is no exemption to that. So one, I mean, dividend, as you know, we have already declared. Uh, the other three a bonus issue, buyback, and splitting of shares. So those will be examined, and in due course, uh, suitable announcements will be made. Uh, so, yeah, as I said, uh, all those who are bound by the circular, uh, they have to do this exercise. So, ESFC is of no exemption. But only thing is, sir, can we have some timeline? Because it is already four or five months, I think, that circular had, uh, is out. And if we are still examining, can there be a timeline like a quarter, two quarter, something can happen like that? No, that... <laughs> I, unfortunately, I am not able to give any timeline because these are all uh, sensitive issues and uh, involving a huge amount of money. So but one can expect some action, right? Because there is no exemption, as you rightly said. Right, right. So it will come. I mean, whether we are doing or not doing, that will come uh, okay. in a suitable and suitable time period. So. Okay. 
and second question got it sir so I, i understand that you will not be able to say much yeah. on this issue but we i just wanted a fair thing that at least something we'll get to know in some time which you are saying yes that's enough uh the second question is uh, basically there there was something around shutdown so what was the shutdown number of days in this quarter so shutdown was for the ammonia plant urea plant and uh, caprolactam plant different period as per the requirement so okay. it ranges from say 15 days to 30 days uh, depending on how big the plant is and uh, we don't take shutdown every year so some we take it every alternate year some it is taken every four years so depending upon the ton of the plant the annual shutdown is taken this is not a something accidental shutdown or like that it is a plant shutdown so uh, it's a routine so normally normally you take every two years this shutdown generally yes 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 okay um only thing is how much was the loss on account of this uh, if had this shutdown not been there what would be the situation of eps or pat for us uh, because ideally i understand that last year was too good to be true and this uh, the current period looks little bit uh, uh, say lower but what would be the ideal numbers for this quarter had this shutdown not been there right that is not a, i mean right full angle to look at because uh, if you don't take shut down then uh, no plant will be uh, will not work in a safe condition then anything can happen no i understand but coming quarter what can one assume uh, yeah so if you want to see this impact of shut down we have put the volume numbers on our website so whatever uh, reduction in quantity that you see in sales quantity and uh, that is on account of shutdown as i said we don't have any demand issue and all so okay. whatever we are producing we are able to sell so when there is a reduction in volume uh, main reason is this plant shutdown what was the operational expense on account of this shutdown uh, basically repairs and maintenance that you would have done in crore yes, yes. so um, it uh, comes to around say 25 30 crore rupees Okay. okay. It depends uh, if we want to change major equipment, then it can be more also. Uh, and sir, last time when uh, we had this phone call, you said that gas prices have con- come down. So what is it for last quarter, and what is it today in terms of the input cost that we are getting on account of gas? Uh, it is more or less the same. Uh, not much difference. Uh, I mean, it is reduced compared to. Uh, say Q1 last year, it is more than 25 percent reduction. But uh, as of now, it is stable kind of thing. Last question from my end, sir. I, we have heard that melamine prices uh, have improved in the month of July, and so has other chemical prices. So yes. is that true? And uh, how much time does it take for GSFT to take pricing? Uh, this uh, industrial products are priced on a import price parity basis (ITP). So when in, uh, in line with international prices, we have to uh, change our price. Otherwise, people will import. If our domestic price is more, people will import and use it. So uh, we can't work like that. So it is in parity. So as you rightly said, it is improving uh, somewhat from July. But as I said, uh, full impact will be seen in H2. It is improving in this quarter, but uh, not so much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's it that from my side. I'll join the queue with another question. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. <laughs> the next question is on the line of Sakit Kapoor from Kapoor Co. Please go ahead. Namaskar, Nana Vadi Ji. Namaskar, Sakit Ji. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I missed some some bit of your opening remarks. So, if I am repetitive, kindly pardon me. So, you you did mention to the fact that Q1 numbers and the Q1 operations uh, should should not be extrapolated. Uh, as the annual uh, and we are going uh, progressing ahead 
the numbers are going to improve both on the operational as well as on the financial front. So this should be the summary substance, firstly, on the uh, on the reported number for this quarter. Yeah, just repeat the last sentence. Sir, uh, sir, this should be the sum and substance on the performance that this this performance should not be annualized. Correct, there are correct, factors, correct. There are factors uh, uh, that has led to the uh, that that led to the lower numbers, and our numbers are here for, to improve from here only, both on the operational terms and thereby also on the financial terms. Correct, correct, correct. So, sir, okay. sir, for yes, sir. So, sir, uh, for as you told last time that you would be giving uh, the EBITDA margin the number for the fertilizer segment post Q1 number. So, what should we now expect from the fertilizer uh, segment uh, going ahead from Q2 on onwards, sir? And uh, also on the utilization levels uh, post the the, uh, the plant shutdown, uh, what are we anticipating going ahead? Yeah. Yes, yes. I promise, but still I am not able to uh, make up any number because government subsidy, you know, behaves in a very erratic way. Hmm. Because uh, say whatever I produce even now, say in August, if I will sell it in October, it will be fetch reduced subsidy. So, and when uh, we will be able to know, farmer will take uh, the fertilizer from retail point, it will be very, very difficult to predict. But still, uh, uh, I will come back to you later on with, uh, if, if some number can be formed up for part on EBIT level for fertilizer. Okay. And on the volume front, sir, what are we looking for if we take the last year number? Correct. Uh, what should be the growth uh, we should look at uh, uh, also by depending upon the, the types of fertilizer we sell? Uh, what, what should be the volume growth we can anticipate? Yeah, so we anticipate some 15 to 20 percent growth in fertilizer volume against last year's actual. And, and which basket are you referring to, sir? Because uh, we have a traded component also here. So, uh, yeah, it will be total. Uh, but as I said, uh, we are increasing production at Sikka unit. That is the main reason for growth in volume. Uh, last year we had a very low production there, but with uh, new cost economics, uh, stable subsidy and lower input prices, we are able to run Sikka unit uh, in a fairly more than 50 percent level. So that will contribute to the growth. And of course, we will have a tearing in urea as well as a DAP uh, in this growth story. So and SICCA number, sir, can you give the volume data? What was the production and sales uh, production number from the unit last year? And what are we uh, emphasizing for the current financial year? So last year, uh, just uh, give one minute. And so then your comment on the raw materials are also, sir. I think so this time uh, we have an improved investor presentation. So thank you, sir. And we and I hope that this, uh, this the descriptive information provided in the presentation, we will con continue with the same. So uh, your thought on uh, your thought on how the uh, RM uh, basket is likely to behave. Uh, and, sir, and then there's a P205, what does that stand for? Sir, if you could explain. One minute, one minute. This uh, production uh, is about 273,000 tons. Okay. So up to July, we have crossed 2 lakh tons. So in this August, we will cross last year's actual production. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we hope to reach our uh, install capacity of 7,22,000 tons, that is 100% uh, production of install capacity, and that is our target this year. And, and here, sir, what are the product profiles there for us? What what are we producing from the system? DAP, then ammonium phosphate sulfate, APS, then NPK-10 and NPK-12, four products. So with this in, 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 increased production, uh, there, there is no issue in the marketing side on selling on the same. Uh, 
No, we have a good brand recall amongst the farmers. So selling is not a problem. And we, depending on the requirement, we cater to the whole country. So uh, our market is quite wide. So even if uh, there is uh, there are issues in some states, we can go to the other states and uh, our ED marketing will throw more light on uh, marketing aspects. Good afternoon, Sakit Ji. This is Sanjeev Verma here. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, see, marketing is not a problem for us in case of fertilizers because if you know consumption of India is quite high and uh, we are very small in this if you see the overall consumption. But Sikka, like you said, our product mix will be based on the market requirement with DAP, the IGS, and then APS and then NPKs. And uh, we are targeting our home market of Gujarat to the tune of 50 to 60 percent of the require our total sales, and that will be the primary market: Maharashtra, MP, Karnataka, uh, Rajasthan. So there will be no issues because uh, our products are of good quality and uh, as required by the farmers. Right. And sir, now coming to the key input cost movement, sir. Firstly, uh, uh, I think so. P two zero five is for the phosphate, raw phosphate, sir. That, that mentioned there. Or what does imported P two zero five O five stands for? No, that is a phosphoric acid, which phosphoric. is made from raw phosphate, of course. But as a we import phosphoric acid, and their prices have come down. And all price analysis is given in our presentation on our website, so earlier what was the price last year, Q1, and now what is the price. So you can look at uh, the major raw material prices there. And sir, how are, how are the power and fuel prices and the raw material mix going to trends are going ahead, sir? Especially on the power and fuel front, I think so, uh, if you could throw some uh, light. Yeah, power and fuel cost will also be low because uh, uh, most of our, of our power is coming from gas-based uh, power generation, and we also have our own cogeneration plants. So since gas price is lower compared to last year, or the whole of the last year, or Q1 of the last year, whatever period we see, so the power cost is going to be lower. And we are uh, putting up a new solar power, power plant, I mean solar panels. Uh, of course, it will take some time for commissioning. So with this uh, such green power, the overall power cost will further go down. Correct, sir. And sir, was there any impact of the cyclone also on the constraint on, 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 on any of the plants? Last sir, I'm going to be there. We have a cyclone. Go on. Go on. Without doing any damage to us. Uh, sir, I missed your comment, sir. I mean, cyclone has no adverse impact on us. Some uh, some windmills uh, and uh, those power uh, transformers were affected. But except that, uh, nothing more has happened. So we don't have any insurance claim or anything on a cyclone. Right. So I'll, I'll wait for the EBIT number, so once you uh, you can uh, come up uh, uh, with the same. Yeah, I will. I will meet ah. you with those numbers. Okay. So if you can if you can spell them out also, sir, it, that would be good, sir. Uh, over over no, the. I will have to be quite careful in giving you numbers. Okay. okay. Okay, sir. And the last point is, sir, if if we take uh, the impact of the uh, the uh, extraordinary line items that that has affected the, the this quarterly profit, what what should be that figure be, sir? Uh, had this been a normal quarter in uh, in that yeah. what should be what should have been our normalized margin? No, as far as the subsidy impact is concerned, at, uh, for P N K fertilizer, there is a uh, 97 crore impact. One-time impact. Uh, so the whatever sales we booked in uh, last year, but when it was sold uh, through POS machine this year, uh, they reduced the subsidy from April onwards. So uh, that impact was in Q1 was 
ninety seven course. Otherwise, uh, inventory impact and all this, these are all continuous process. But that impact was also around twenty five course. Uh, that is, uh, we write down the inventory to net realization value. So whatever is produced at high cost and likely to be sold at lower price has to be brought down to the uh, actual realization as per the accounting standards. So that impact was around 25 crores. So in all around 120, 125 crores could be said to be one time effect not really pertaining to this quarter. Uh, 125 is not for the entire for the June quarter that is your telling. Yeah, so it is uh, it is out of my whatever physical activities I did. Yes, this is just a financial thing that has come up. Otherwise, it's not relating to my operation during the quarter. Uh, no, no, sir. What I was asking is this 125 crore entire impact has been felt for the June quarter itself or? Has it percolated for the... Uh, no, it is, for? it is built in June quarter. June quarter, indeed. Yes, 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 please. Not in the uh, previous quarter, uh, not in the uh, subsequent quarter. Yeah, it will not repeat in subsequent quarter. And and the subsidy revision downward was last uh, in, in the month uh, of uh, April only. Yeah, it was done in April. It was done in January 23 also. Ah. And then again, it was done in April 23. And uh, again, it is likely to be done in from October 23. Okay, so that at that time again for that quarter we may face uh, this inventory losses. But we will take care in September quarter itself, uh, so that uh, the spillover is avoided as far as possible. So this 125 crore impact is what will get negated uh, going ahead. That will be going back to the uh, bottom line. Right, right. Sir, on the raw phosphate prices, sir, uh, how are our contracts uh, being there for uh, uh, price trends there? And I think so. We have made some investment in uh, one of the JVs also in uh, in, uh, in international ge geography. So yes. how are the offtake there? Uh, abhi kaisa hai, sir? What is our plan for this year? No, the JV is for phosphoric acid in Tunisia. That is quite hot. So it supplies phosphoric acid, but there are no pricing advantage. The international price uh, applicable to India during the quarter is applied for whatever supply they make from Tunisia. So there is no price advantage there, only uh, supply surety is there. That plant is also not operating at optimum capacity, around 30-40% only, they have some technical and social issues. But hopefully from uh, next year, 24-25, it should improve the performance with all uh, whatever steps they are taking for plant improvement. So we should be able to see the results next year with improved supplies from them. Okay, sir. So total requirement is how many we source our agreement is 180,000 P205 uh, and 180 is assigned to Mandal. So total capacity is 360,000 tons. So we and Coromandel share 50-50 percent of the output. And uh, with 180,000, if it is coming, we can make around 4 lakh tons of DAP in Sikta with that P25. And balance uh, 3 4 lakh production, we source the P2 from, from open market. Okay, sir. And, and, and the pricing advantage on this 1 lakh 80,000 quantity, uh, is it at arm length market price or? Uh, uh, it is an arm, arm's length, so there is no price advantage. Only quantity. Only when the others don't give you, this is a uh, sure source of uh, supplies. Correct, sir. And on the rock phosphate, the last point on the, uh, how are the rock phosphate prices currently trending for last quarter? What it was and are we contracted price? Kya hai, sir, aage ke liye? We, we source most of our rock phosphate from Rajasthan State Mines and Minerals Company. So there it is a steady price. So 
once maybe once in a year or so they change the price according to their costing so right now it is around 15000 rupees per ton and we source one or two consignment that is totaling 60 to 70000 tons from import uh, sources so that price is also uh, price is quite low now in line with the phosphoric acid price so uh imported rock is also in that range only 16 17000 rupees okay. so so for phosphoric acid uh, uh, what is our contracted price for the next uh, quarter sir uh, that trend is lower only uh this quarter price is expected to be around 850 dollars july to september october onwards is still prices are not decided so this quarter like uh, so last year uh i mean uh, october to december it was 1700 dollar now it is half to 850 dollars it is half now okay and what was factored in for the uh, april uh, april may june quarter sir april may june was uh, 970 dollars it is reduced by 120 dollars in july to september correct correct sir. and you you gave the outlook for industrial product to be uh, flatish to uh, to 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 slightly on the upper upper side this is what we can uh, look forward yeah, for the it will it will not go lower at least uh, we can say but it will improve only going forward thank thank you sir for all all the elaborate answers sir uh, yeah. all the best sir to you sir and to the team sir also thank, thank you, you and namaskar sir. namaskar thank you the next question is from the line of madhur rati from counter cyclical investments please go ahead good afternoon thank you for uh, thank you for taking my question sir uh, can you just explain uh, regarding uh, the sorry to or... interrupt uh, mr rati we are unable to hear you clearly uh, am i audible right now uh, sir you sounding very soft hello hello yes sir please proceed yeah sir can you just explain regarding the buyback that we had considered with the gujarat government so where is the process on that yeah so as i said uh, the buyback bonus and splitting of shares all those proposals will be examined by gsfc board and uh, whatever <clears throat> outcome or decision is that will be announced whenever it is no decided some concrete course of action but as i said as per the government guidelines we will be examining those restructuring proposals and and there are no exemptions to any state psu in this matter so okay, please sir uh, is there some kind of uh, like timeline when you think that this will happen no there is no fixed timeline everything will be done during this year i mean we will whatever alternatives is possible will be examined and uh, something this added during this year that uh, i can say so <coughs> most likely next year 24 we'll see some kind of outcome from that right jarab kaise bola tha hello uh, so so most likely in fy24 we'll see some kind of outcome from this right yeah at least we can expect uh, i think i hope so it is a bar period of getting so i am not able to comment much okay sir thank you that was very helpful thank you the next question is in the line of ankur sanwal an individual investor please go ahead thank you for the opportunity does company expect a positive revision in subsidies for uh, in october uh, for fertilizers no no it will be lowered because input prices have come down so uh, subsidy will go down sir can you also give a detailed uh, analysis of what industrial production is performing and what will be the future trend so as i said uh, our products are caprolactam melamine nylon 6 they are uh, monopoly or semi monopoly products of gsfc and uh, our plants are quite old so the plant capacities are built up as per the past 
demand considerations and compared to that uh, today's demand is much more so we don't have any much issue on selling of our chemicals or industrial products and uh, we have steady market the large customers uh, tie up so really we don't do any kind of retail trading or uh, small lot trading it is a most of the b2b segment that we cater and uh, as i said the prices are uh, in the international price parity basis so every month uh, when prices change uh, we Uh, calibrate our price in line with international prices, so that local buyers don't have incentive to import instead of buying from us. And uh, as you know, all the chemical, uh, all chemical industry is going through the low ebb right now, and all chemical companies have shown subdued performance. So. our chemical segment was also no exception so the uh, margin was under pressure and some inventory built up had happened but now from july onwards we see some improvement in realization and going forward we expect the prices to improve and along with that margin may also get improved so that is the picture that we see in fy24 thank you sir traditionally sir our uh, margins from industry products are pretty less are we working on um, modernizing the plants or debottlenecking them which product you said uh, the industrial products you you told uh, caprolactam melamine those are all cyclical in nature so the melamine gave us a huge profit Two years before, the prices were all time high. So plants are up to date, and all they are working beyond 100 percent. All plants are uh, working on more than 100 percent capacity. And Thank you, sir. Thank you. Keep the plant uh, in good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question. May please press star in one. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Ashish Agarwal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, yes, please. Any any thought around nano urea or nano fertilizer for that matter? Yeah, that our ED marketing will reply on this. Uh, in case of uh, your question for nano urea, uh, yeah, it's still in the lab scale at our end for manufacturing, but. Uh, Uh, we are looking out for the tie-ups also, and uh, other nano uh, fertilizers like DAP or NPK uh, is still in the lab scale uh, status only. So once lab scale is over, we'll be having a test marketing, and then it will be commercialized. Uh, we are working on that. When can we expect something positive on that side? Uh, just a tentative timeline. Um, I think uh, urea and DAP can be in this financial year, uh, most probably because they need a six months period for test also, and we have to go for the reports for two years seasonal this thing. So it will take little time for commercialization, but we will be able to know the test result by six months time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Ashish Agarwal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. 
हेलो ओनली वॉन्ट लास्ट क्वेश्चन टू बी एंसर्ड विच इज ऑन सब्सिडी रिसीवेबल अमाउंट वॉट इज इट राइट नाउ इन द बुक्स एंड वॉट इज कैश इन हैंड करेंटली इन द बुक्स subsidy uh, in the book say i mean uh, to be received from government is a very small amount maybe 200 300 crore rupees in books it remains small because government uh, considers uh, subsidy payable only after uh, post sale when farmer buys the fertilizer so when we book the subsidy when we do the first point sale but government obligation arises much later so real subsidy receivable is very small as i said for pnk fertilizer they have paid subsidy up to 15th of july okay. uh, and for urea they have paid up to 30th june so very small amount is uh, outstanding on subsidy account as you may be noticing government has a huge uh, fund inflow in form of good gst collection good corporate tax and uh, individual income tax collections so okay. they are equally fast in paying uh, not their subsidies and other debts so okay. like in past years uh, we don't have much subsidy outstanding and what would be the cash in hand uh, uh, in terms of both fd or icd or any uh, bank balance put together Yeah, so we have around uh, 2,000 crores cash in hand or FDs, and uh, of course we will have a uh, big obligation of dividend payment of around 400 crores in September. So that will use up some cash. But uh, ultimately, when large projects are implemented, the real utilization will come into play. So uh, still, you are saying uh, that 400 crores netting of that also we have some 1600, 1700 crores of cash, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And where have we invested this? And uh, in fixed deposits and uh, some government uh, schemes. What would be the yield, sir? Currently, uh, rough uh, rough yield? Uh, it depends upon the cash requirement, but it is between six to seven percent. Great. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Sunil Kumar Gupta, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Only one question I have. Yeah. Uh, turnover that has gone down from 3,000 and odd crores in the last Q1 of 2022-23 to 2,062 crores in uh, June 23, which is around 25%. So, is it a uh, only because of subsidy reduction, or is there a lack of demand or something? No, there is no lack of demand. So, mainly subsidy reduction and some price reduction in industrial products. Okay. So, so that is uh, on overall basis. we expect that uh, we will maintain this turnover uh, last year turnover in this year also that means last year your turnover was uh, 11368 crore so you'll come to that level for the whole year 23 24 that is what we expect okay and the profitability will it also come to that level or there will be some reduction <laughs> no last year was the historic profit for gsfc yeah so that is uh, Not achievable, okay. but we will have a good uh, profit to, for the year. Okay, because last time your profit was something around twelve hundred and sixty-five crores. Yes, net profit was around that. Correct. Okay, so uh, it will be less, but whatever has been lost in the June quarter obviously cannot be recouped. That's what I assume. You know, you may be knowing that uh, we talked about these government guidelines. Yeah. Yeah. Various issues. So first guideline was on dividend. Okay. So GSFC holds uh, shares in various state PSUs and other companies. Yes. Uh, who all are uh, mandated with uh, declaring higher dividend. Hmm. GSFC will be beneficiary of that large dividend declared by various companies. Yeah. Which will be reflected in this Q2 when because most of the companies are AGM right. in. By September, yeah. 
Yeah. And we can account those dividend in this Q2 results. Okay. So that dividend income will be substantial in Yeah, quarter. it will be around 80 to 90 crores. But last year also, if I compare Q1 of last year and Q1 of this year, your other income uh, will be included, will include a, a dividend also. So that other income is going up from 30 crores to 48, 49 crores. Yeah, so, so other income may, will have dual component. Uh, yeah. One, the cash we talk, so it will earn good interest, and other yeah. will have good. Yeah, the incremental because the 30 crores of uh, income last year was with very poor dividend from other companies that will balloon to around 80 90 crores in the current year. No, it will be much more, it will be 140 crores. 140 crores, okay, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, as a shareholder, I wish all of us the very best. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Dinesh from Kawad Investments. Please go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I I think I'm audible, sir. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah. Please be a little loud. Okay. Uh, sir, I had only three questions. Uh, first, how uh, as a, just a follow-up question of the previous one. What is the change in volume we have seen, sir? Is it positive or negative? And also the change in the price which we have seen. Uh, how is it corresponding to the revenue this quarter? No, uh, there was some reduction in volume in Q1 versus Q1. But as I said, uh, volume mainly pertains to fertilizer segment. So we expect on overall yearly basis a growth of 15 to 20 percent compared to last year. So FY24, we expect a growth in volume, fertilizer volume. And uh, price, uh, yes, price, some price correction were there, but as I said, we we expect some improvement in prices of industrial products in, in Q2 and a little more from S2 onwards. Correct. Okay, sir. Sir, and certain competitors are also filing with the government, requesting them to don't uh, to revise the subsidies, not to revise the subsidies retrospectively. Do GSS we have any stand on that, or we are just following the government? No, these uh, policies uh, come after a lot of deliberations, and then it is difficult to have any say in that. But government ultimate objective is the direct uh, subsidy transfer in farmers' accounts. So mm -hmm. they are also be working on pilot on this line, and if mm -hmm. they find it feasible, then we will be released from all the subsidy issues. We will be charging full amount from farmer and government will be paying subsidy to farmer's account directly. So we will not have to worry about subsidy claims and uh, delay payment and this and that. Sir, we'll, sir we'll, how do you, what is your outlook on the agriculture this year, the season this year, agriculture season this year? Season is still good because uh, now there's a wide uh, rainfall as well as reservoir levels are good and uh, so that will occur well for rabi season also and uh, based on that only we see uh, rise in the volume otherwise with bad season we would not have been able to project growth. So and the inventory which we are holding what is the rotation of that inventory every three months are we rotating once or how is the inventory ratio going on, sir? So fertilizer is it is seasonal because, uh, say, January to March, whatever we produce, uh, don't get sold till maybe May, June, July. So Correct. fertilizer, it is little longer, depend on the season. But when we produce from in the season, it gets immediately sold. But we don't have such a long inventory Thing. It is uh, less than one month in industrial product, and fertilizer uh, on an average it can be two months. So mm -hmm. we don't have much outstanding as well as we don't have much inventory blockage. Sir, sir, I initially mentioned to you, Mr. One of the participants had asked a question regarding well, that Gujarat is our 50% of our business, and rest of the states are 50%. Are we planning to change this ratio or? the proportion in which we are concentrated on Gujarat in India? Uh, uh, this is Sanjeev Orma here. 
See, Gujarat mm -hmm. being our home market, we are concentrated to have it minimum 50% of our share here. The reason is because this is the most economical zone for GSFC to deal in fertilizers. And that is why we are concentrating here. And we have our own network here of 272 depots run by our 100% subsidy GATL. And the rest of the country, we deal with the dealers only. So we, we will be concentrating on Gujarat a bit more. But yes, our production will be increasing, so we'll be reaching the other states also effectively. Sir, which is our two top export market in the world? Uh, export for the fertilizers? Yeah, fertilizers. The fertilizers in India, since this is governed under subsidy, we uh, no, there is hardly any export except we need a permission. And uh, India is importing 50% of fertilizers, approximately of the total requirement. So ex exports becomes a question mark still. Okay. So yeah. the India, then, sir, what is your view? Uh, India is totally lifting the bans on import and reducing it, and uh, that that uh, totally reflected in the subsidy prices as well going forward. So, do we envisage these exports to be in higher number? What is the traction of these imports coming into India? Of course. Not able to understand the question. Yeah, because I'm asking. I'm asking, sir. Followed by reduction of subsidy as government has lifted the ban on imports of fertilizer also. But so the government is appreciating imports of fertilizer. How are you seeing this traction? Do you seeing is it completely open for countries or there is certain restriction like uh, that among that the ten percent only has been uh, we have seen remaining ninety percent has to come uh, or how is the traction going forward? Is it totally coming full fledged coming in India or is it just the trailer of the picture which is going to come. Okay, so, uh, restriction on the fertilizer, say, in case of imports, uh, the need-based imports are done uh, effectively by the industry as a whole. And yes, government is uh, coming in between or controlling the prices because I, what I said earlier, uh, India mm -hmm. depends highly on import, nearly 50% of requirement. And if there mm -hmm. are no controls on the prices, it will be a big um, blow to the country as a whole. As such, uh, Indian requirement is met, uh, and we are one of the biggest consumers. And another is a Brazil, so it becomes our season. So uh, importers are keen to supply to India, yes, and India is keen to buy but at a price which is um, reasonable to this. Correct. Sir, what is the price parity, sir? Matlab, is there, there might be some price parity. What is the price parity of imports and the uh, price that if you see the prices of uh, trade across various countries of fertilizers, India is the cheapest uh, country we are taking on the cheapest prices. If you go to Bangladesh also, they are still $100 more. I'm giving an average figure to you. If you go to Brazil, it is $200 more per ton on average basis. So India is okay. sourcing very nicely the fertilizers. Fertilizer market. So there is, as we have also planned our graphics of 4,000 crores, which will be laid out in two years, do we... Uh, in research, because we have focused more on sulfuric acid, potash, and do we, uh, and just sir, how, how much is a backward integrated chain? Are we fully backward integrated, or how is it? How much percentage yeah. are we backward it, integrated? How much self sustained as a company GSFC is? Uh, in Baroda, we are fully uh, backward integrated. In Sikka, we are in the uh, process of getting backward integrated to some extent, not fully. It will be a phase manner, but yes, in Baroda we are 100% uh, backward integrated. What, what is the volume of Baroda? Bapanam? What is the volume of Baroda in proportionately to? Both uh, the units are nearly, both produce nearly 10 lakh tons each. So it's a 50 50 percent. Uh, okay, 50 50 percent, sir. Yeah. Okay, so what are we are, yeah, so let's just follow up on a final question. Uh, Agriculture is depending on fertilizer. So what do you, do you envisage going forward 24, 25 to be not just price, but the volume as well? What do you envisage in the volume growth? Like uh, um, our uh, CFO said, we will be envisaging some 15, 20% growth in the volume. So we are not talking about the total values. We are talking about the growth in the turnover and also. And are we, are we uh, fully equipped with, to meet that growth or are we seeing an expansion going forward in case uh, 
And you see, at present, in the expansion cannot come in one year time, so we'll be utilizing the capacity to the fullest extent. And A4 will mm -hmm. add to some 10% volume when we are com coming with a small plant. But yes, we are expecting 15 20 Bigger expansion are not planned, it's a small expansion and the water mm -hmm. going on. Okay. Sir, and after, what is the purpose? Okay. Will those cash reserves be held in the company? After dividend, will it be used for this expansion or are we planning to raise any funds going forward also? That uh, board will take a call, but uh, uh, there will be some... requirement is there. Do you feel the requirement is there apart from cash reserves? No. Uh, only thing I can say is that there will be consistency in dividend in line with the earnings. So if there are earnings, uh, I think management will not... Uh, hold the uh, dividend uh, belonging to shareholders. So, mm -hmm. in line with the earnings, uh, the dividend consistency may be expected. Mm -hmm. and, and with this conference call, I heard one thing different from other previous conference calls. You are a little confident about nano urea first time. So, what do you feel? I mean, there are certain conclusions come on nano urea and other nano tap because this type of positivity I have seen first time in GSFC. Because you were saying at the end, we'll be completing our test and probably commercializing in two years' time. So I'm seeing a positivity. How do you see it as a business going forward? Uh, see, in case of urea, see, urea is the most preferred fertilizer by the farmers of India because of the prices and subsidies. But the prices are very low, so it, this is the most uh, preferred fertilizer. Uh, second come the phosphatica DAP is what you are talking. So. Indian uh, farmers are highly dependent on this thing, but slowly uh, different companies, including GSFC, are trying to have a balanced nutrition amongst the various states, which is a 4 is to 2 is to 1 ratio. And therefore, GSFC is, is mostly promoting uh, sulfur based fertilizer like ammonium phosphate sulfate, ammonium sulfate, and we get 10 and 12. I just said three things that I wanted to know in this is one, uh, whether, the, the, well, what the, whether the news are hyped or not whether it will be costing one-tenth of what the actual fertilizer is costing today. Is it true, sir? What is the what is your view on the prices? Will it reduce the burden of farmers and the government too? Prices of urea? Yeah, yeah nano-urea, if it comes. Uh, nano, see, nano-urea is already there. And uh, nano-urea is already there in the market in a big way. And the prices are in, both of them are uh, nano-urea, one bottle of 500 ml is um, cheaper than the one bag of uh, fertilizer, but still it is in initial stages um, because uh, consuming this or applying that to the field is a different uh, way and slowly farmers are getting used to that thing. So once that comes in full fledged, even if we are able to replace 25% of uh, this granule urea or prill urea with an nano urea, it will be a good achievement for the country as well. Okay, 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 sir. Sir, and just uh, one thing, just uh, your judgment and answer I want on this. And forward looking, it's very subjective. Going forward, will GSFC see a huge traction in the government's eye also? Not just as a fertilizer company, but as a chemical business. Because we also plan to enter into chemicals rather than just being fertilizer. As rightly pointed out last year by last investor call, we are surely moving to chemicals. So will the government appreciate this step and also whether the business model is fit to get into chemical business? Just to be not just to be a fertilizer company, but to enter into the chemical business as well. What is your view, sir? Yeah, so as uh, everybody is aware, fertilizer is highly controlled segment from different mm -hmm. angles. So uh, to run a company in a business-like manner, you need to get out or have a reduction in those kind of dependence. So, so, we, are, so, we, are, so we are having a vision to uh, shift from just fertilizers to being a chemicals business. Is it on our track, sir? Are we on that track? Yeah, yeah. So uh, last time it may have been mentioned that in the head, <laughs> whatever we are doing is only for chemicals that we will be starting. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any plan for uh, expanding in fertilizer space at the age. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. right now we we'll, we are receiving a, a further mm -hmm. investment of 4,000 crores in the age for chemical business. And so this is up 
appreciated by the government sir because you are partly owned by the government no no this is all board driven company and government don't give us any instruction so all the directors together whatever they feel best for the company we are free to do government don't advise us on any of this thing okay okay sir. so which okay sir all the best okay thank you thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one Uh, As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to Mr. P. D. Nana Wati for his closing comments. Yeah, thank you all for the uh, participation and asking relevant questions. So, as uh, I mentioned, the growth story continues, and uh, this was a. Uh, some kind of aberration uh, in the, on the financial numbers, and uh, we'll iron it out during the year. And uh, we'll be aiming for uh, marching higher and higher in top line and bottom line. There is no stopping anywhere. And I request you to maintain your trust in GSFC. Thank you. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of GSFC, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.